Welcome to ECE 3300 at the University of Utah. In lecture number 15, we're going to be talking about Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law is one of two laws that we use to find the electric field from a static charge distribution. The other law is Gauss's Law for the electric field, which we will be studying in a couple of lectures. Today we're going to talk about what is the electric field, and that will bring us to Coulomb's Law. We're going to talk about point, line, surface, and volume charge distributions, and how to calculate the electric field in the rectangular, cylindrical, and spherical coordinate systems. So by the end of the day, I hope that given any charge distribution, given any types of charges in any combination, that you will be able to find the electric field and also the electric flux density. So first let's talk about what is the electric field. Let's suppose that we have two charges, Q1 and Q2. They're separated by a distance r um, that's given here, and they're embedded in a material that has a permittivity of epsilon. The force from charge 1 on charge 2 is given by multiplying the charges, dividing by 4 pi epsilon, and the distance between them squared, and its direction, or its vector, is from 1 to 2, like this. That force is given in newtons, and it's literally a force that either brings the charges together or forces them apart. Now let's suppose that right here, where Q2 is, we put a 1 Coulomb test charge. In that case, the force from 1 to 2 would be equal to Q1 times 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon r squared again in the 1, 2 direction. This, if we put per coulomb, is going to give us the electric field. So the electric field at point 2 is equal to Q1 divided by 4 pi epsilon r squared r from 1 to 2. The electric flux density is the permittivity times the electric field. And what that means is I'm going to have that be Q1 over 4 pi r squared r from 1 to 2. Notice that the electric field depends on the material, but d does not. D only depends on the charge distribution. And of course the distances, that's part of the distribution. Let's see what the electric field typically looks like. If we have two charges, as we discussed in the previous case, the electric field always starts on the positive charge and ends on the negative charge. The electric field lines are open lines, they always start and end on charges. But we often draw them this way. If we have an isolated charge like so, we draw the electric field or the electric flux density around it as the spokes of a wheel. What we're do is, doing is implying that someplace very far away there are negative charges all out there at infinity. Now remember that the electric field depends on the material, but the elect electric flux density does not. The electric flux density is the density of these lines. Each one of these lines can be called a flux line. The density of them, see right here how close they are together? The density of those lines is the electric flux density. So right here, close to that charge, the electric flux density is high, and as we get further away from the charge, the electric flux density is low. So D is a flux line, and then E is the actual force that would be felt as a result of the flux line and also the material.